Um, yeah, so I'm um, an active contributor to Symfony and the head of training at Sensor Labs. Um, so my talk is about serializing data, uh, especially with the Symfony serializer, which is used by Drupal 8. Um, so I will first talk about how to serialize data with PHP, what we have in PHP for serialization. Then I will talk about um, this Symfony serializer component, and then I will conclude with some uh, integration in Drupal to show you how this Symfony component is, is used. <coughs> so basically, um, the, the, the concept of serializing data um, means we want to translate data structures, so scalar values, PHP arrays, or PHP objects. Um, so we want to translate PHP objects um, to a, a format that we can um, we can store first, and that we can eventually restore to other objects to the same object. Um, so that we can, for example, share this um, serialized content to to recreate the the PHP object. Um, so the, the formats we we know for serializing data, for example, are HTTP messages. Uh, the HTTP pro protocol is, uh, uh, is based on string, so you are sending an HTTP request and you will receive an HTTP response. Um, so the content of an HTTP um, request is serialized as a string, uh, sent for the response. And for example, in Symfony with the HTTP foundation component, you can recreate a request object and a response object based on, uh, on the strings. Um, you can use XML as a serialization format or uh, JSON, YAML, um, CSV, um, the SOAP format, which is based on XML too. Um, so these are common uh, formats for serializing data. Um, so we use we use serialization for many use cases. So as I said, storage, you want to store an object into your database, for example, or uh, in a file, or you want to produce REST APIs. You want to expose your data with a REST API as JSON or, or XML. Um, you want to use SOAP web services, if uh, some of you are still using SOAP. Um, in the Java world, um, we are also using serialization uh, of objects to distribute the objects. For example, when you have, uh, you want to uh, have an object on the machine and you want to send it to another machine. Um, so how we do serialization with PHP, um, we have different tools. Um, so the very first function that I guess everyone has already used is the serialize PHP function. Um, so this function will serialize any data uh, in a proprietary format of PHP, um, well, a format that only PHP can, can read. So you can format any scalar value, so floating point numbers, integers, uh, Boolean values, strings, arrays, um, even objects. And so when you use this serialize function, um, you will end up with this kind of, um, of output. So we have <coughs> uh, the type of the serialized value, so integer, uh, double, null value, Boolean value, string. As you can see, Boolean values are stored as zero and one. Uh, and for arrays, so we also uh, serialize the values in the array. Um, if you want to deserialize these this strings, uh, you can use the unserialized PHP function, uh, which does the opposite operation. So it takes the string and reproduces the scalar values of the arrays or um, the, uh, the uh, objects. Um, so for the object, for example, as you can see, we have, um, we said that it's an object, O means object, 8 is um, the class length, uh, the class name. Uh, length, we have the class, the class name, and then we have uh, an array which contains all the properties we want to uh, serialize. In this case, there is no properties. Uh, but unserializing and serialized functions are not really handy in the PHP world. They are useful for very basic use cases, uh, but not for many uh, case, uh, use cases. <coughs> um, if, you, uh, if you deal with objects in PHP, if you want to serialize or unserialize PHP objects, you can also use um, double underscore sleep and double underscore wake up magic functions. Uh, maybe you have already uh, used them. Um, for, 
for example, we have this class, uh, a connection object from a database namespace. Um, so an object that represents a database connection. And it has four properties. We have a link, so the link to the database. We have uh, the data source name, the user, and the passwords. And we have this private method, connect, which creates a PDO instance uh, when it's uh, invoked. And so the PDO instance is stored in, uh, in this link property. Um, when you have to deal with this kind of objects, this connection object, uh, this object is stateful, it has a state, and, and we have this PDO instance inside which can't be serialized. So, so you have this kind of PHP object that you can't serialize like PDO. Um, so if you want to serialize a connection object, if for example you want to do that, um, what you can do is to implement this sleep, double underscore sleep function. Um, so if this function is implemented in your object, PHP will call it uh, when you will use the serialized PHP function. So in this case, um, I'm just telling that I want to serialize the DSN property, the user property, and the password property. I'm just skipping um, the link property that contains the, the PDO object. Um, the wake up function will perform the opposite operation. So when you will execute the unserialized uh, PHP function, then the object will be recreated thanks to this wake up function. So we want to automatically reconnect to the database uh, by calling the connect uh, method. Um, so I have my connection object, which receives some user passwords and, and data source name. And then when I query my database with my query method, um, the private method connect is, call, uh, is called to create the uh, PDO uh, connection. And then I want to serialize this object for storing. And then when I will unserialize the object later on, um, the wake up function will be invoked so that I can automatically reconnect to the database and requery uh, re my, uh, my database. <coughs> um, another way to use serialization in PHP uh, I think it's since PHP 5.3 or 5.4. We have um, a new interface called seriali Serializable Interface, which basically replaces double underscore wake up and double underscore sleep. So if your objects implement this interface, um, you will need to have a serialized function in your objects. Uh, and as you can see, in this function, you are free to uh, tell how you want to serialize your, your PHP object. So you just return the serialized uh, representation of this connection object. So it's a basically the same thing than um, uh, it's basically the same thing than uh, sleep and wake up. And for the, um, the wake up function, it's now unserialized, so you receive the data, um, so the string, the serialized string, that you can unserialize to retrieve your your values, and then you can repopulate your PHP properties to recreate this connection object and then reconnect to your database, for example. Okay. So this is basically um, the tool we have in PHP natively to, uh, to serialize and unserialize data. <coughs> but we also have JSON. Okay. So I guess everyone uses JSON here. Um, so PHP is able to handle JSON. Um, we have two native functions, JSON encode and JSON decode. So JSON encode receives the scalar data or the PHP array or the PHP object you want to um, to serialize. Uh, and it returns the, the JSON string um, that corresponds to this uh, scalar value or PHP array or, or PHP objects. And JSON decode can uh, recreate uh, your, your, your initial data uh, from a JSON string. Um, there's also JSON serializable interface uh, you can implement if you want to um, serialize a PHP object. So if you want an object to be serializable with um, in JSON, so for example, this one is taken from the documentation. We have an object, uh, an array value object that implements this JSON serializable interface. And as you can see, it forces you to have um, a JSON serialized method. So it's only for seriali serializing the object. So you basically just return um, the represent the, the, the data you want to serialize uh, with JSON 
So when you use the JSON encode function, uh, this JSON encode function will check that your object implements this interface and will automatically call the methods um, to get the PHP array that contains the data you want to serialize. And it will return the serialize, uh, the JSON serialized representation of that uh, array. Um, so that's what we have in, in PHP mostly. Sorry. Um, <coughs> but as I said, um, the serialization process is very complex. Um, especially the opposite uh, operation when you want to deserialize a content and you want to recreate an object, an object graph. Uh, that's particularly complex. Um, we will say that because, for example, in JSON, uh, in JSON, you don't have any metadata in the JSON file. So when you have nested object graphs, uh, it becomes more complex to uh, to unserialize data. Um, so you have to take into account also circular references if you have uh, nested object graphs. Um, you have to take care about the types. Uh, maybe you don't want to serialize everything, so you want to hide some data in your serialize uh, output. Um, you may want to serialize to different formats, so JSON and XML, to, to be able to support different formats. So this is why uh, this process of serializing data is very complex in a, on a daily basis. So Symfony comes with a component called Symfony Serializer, um, which performs this task of serializing data, so from uh, serializing a PHP array or PHP object to JSON or XML, basically, and also be able to uh, recreate the object graph based on a serialized XML or JSON string. Okay. So this component is meant to turn objects into a specific format, XML, JSON, YAML, uh, or something else. Uh, it's up to you. And also be the, and, and also recreate the object graphs based on the, um, the serialized uh, content. So this is how it works. This is the internal um, implementation of this serializer. Um, so the serializer uh, can serialize or unserialize. So we have the two operations. So I can serialize and I can unserialize. So when you have a, an object graph, a PHP object that you want to serialize, when you will invoke this serialize function or method on the serializer, your object will first be normalized to a PHP array. That's the first step. We want to get a PHP array representation of the object graph. Um, so we have an array, and then this array can be encoded to um, a standard format, like JSON or XML, because by default we support the two uh, formats. If you want to support, let's say, YAML, you can implement an extension of this serializer component to, um, to, to support YAML format or something else. This is what Drupal does for, for example, JSON, JSON HAL. Uh, they have an, an extension of the serializer component. I will show you that later on. Um, <coughs> but yes, this is what we have, a two-step process. I will normalize my PHP object to an array, and then I will encode the PHP array to um, an XML string or JSON string. And when I want to unserialize a JSON string or an, ML, an XML string, I will first decode that string and to reproduce a PHP array and from that PHP array that represents my object graph, I will be able to denormalize the array to recreate the object graph. This is how this serializer uh, object works. Um, so the class, the, the main serializer class, uh, implements all those methods. So you have serialize and deserialize. So these are the two methods you will mostly call on these objects. Uh, but you can also only normalize and denormalize an object to PHP arrays if you just need this step in particular. Um, or you can encode and decode uh, a PHP array to JSON or to XML if you just need uh, this step. You can also do that with the encode, encode and decode uh, functions. And you can also check if um, you support normalization and denormalization or if you want to support encoding and decoding. Okay. But mainly, you will use the first two methods to serialize and unserialize content. So this is how you can set up these components. You need 
the main serializer object, the main serializer class that comes from the serializer uh, component, the, com the serializer namespace. And as you can see, this object is constructed with two parameters, an array of normalizers and an array of encoders. Um, so the array of normalizers, um, so we have multiple normalizers. In this case, I'm just using one, the, the property normalizer. And we can also populate the serializer object with two uh, or many encoders. So in this case, I'm using the two default JSON encoder and XML encoder. And then you just have to call the serialize method. You give it an object, PHP object you want to serialize. The format in which you want to convert this PHP object, so in this case, JSON, and it returns the JSON representation of this uh, object graph. If you want to retrieve your original PHP object from a JSON string, you can use the deserialize function. So you, are, you pass the JSON string. Then you tell which kind of object, which type of object you want to recreate with this uh, serializer. And what's the original format you are uh, passing to that serializer object. And so in this case, my serializer will be able to unserialize the JSON string into um, this acme backslash user object. So it will recreate this acme backslash user instance. Um, <coughs> so the API has four uh, normalizers by default in the Symfony core components, in this, uh, in this, in this component. So the property serializer uh, basically introspects your object and it gets the values from the PHP properties. So if you expose public properties, there will be the values will be extracted from the object. If your object has private or protected properties, in this case, the serializer will use uh, the reflection API to introspect the internals of your PHP object to get the values from um, uh, from your object. And same when the when the normalizer will recreate, will repopulate your object. We also use the introspection to repopulate the, uh, the object. Um, the get set method normalizer uh, uses getters to uh, get the values of your object. So if you have a getter method or is a method or has a method, uh, they will be invoked by this uh, normalizer. And it also uses the setter method to repopulate your, uh, your PHP object. Um, the object normalizer is. Um, I would say an extension of the get set method normalizer, but it uses uh, another another component which is called property access. It's a Symfony component to encap that encapsulates introspection operation. And we have this custom normalizer to let you uh, implement custom uh, normalizing steps. Regarding the encoders, we have two main two main encoders: the JSON encoder and the, the XML encoder. But we can also use the chain encoder and chain decoder to chain multiple encoders or chain um, multiple decoders. So I will show you some basic usages first of this component, and I will show you then the new features coming in uh, in 2.6, 2.7 versions. So let's say we have a class, a movie object first, a very simple movie object, which has some properties, so some IDs, title, description, release date, um, storage key, and so on. So um, I want to serialize this object to JSON or XML. So I'm populating my movie objects with some, some information. <coughs> so I want to serialize the seven movie, if, if you saw this movie. And um, then I will use my serializer to turn my movie object into a JSON string or XML string with my serialize method. Oops, sorry. And I can make the opposite operation with the deserialize um, function. So by default, um, when you use the property um, normalizer, as I said, the property normalizer introspects your object. So if you have public property, they are, they are read. But if you have private or protected properties, they are introspected. And as you can see in JSON, my movie objects looks like this. It's basically like a JSON encode because we have a very simple object graph. And in XML, you will get this uh, representation. So we can see that we have all the properties. ID by default is not set, same for the storage key, but we, we have um, a tag for ID and storage keys. But they don't have any values. They are not set in the PHP object. 
Uh, and we can see that the release date um, tag is uh, written in, um, in camel case. <coughs> if you want to deserialize the, the string, so remember, you can use the deserialize function, you just give it the JSON string, the, the type you want to recreate, the type of object you want to recreate, and the uh, input format, in this case JSON. And so the serializer will recreate the movie object. So this is in JSON, this is in, in XML. And if you print the state of your object, as you can see, uh, so the ID is not set because in the serialized string it was not set. But the, the title, the slug, the description, the duration, and the release date are repopulated into the movie, movie object. Um, this normalizer, this property normalizer, um, has um, a nice integration uh, for the construct method. If, for example, you have a, a construct method in your object, when your string will be um, denormalized, when your object will be recreated, repopulated, the normalizer will first check if there is a construct method which accepts some arguments, and if you have a match with the PHP variable name and your property, um, uh, no, I'm sorry, if you have PHP variable names that match the serialized attributes in JSON or XML, in this case, the normalizer will automatically call your construct method and inject the values, only for the, the parameters you want to, uh, to inject. And for the other properties, then the normalizer will use the, the introspection to repopulate the other um, parameters. So this is by default in the, in the default property normalizer. <coughs> As I said, we have a get set method uh, normalizer, which is able to call any getter, hazard, or either method by convention. So instead of using my property normalizer, I will use the get set method normalizer, or also the object normalizer, um, which perform the same the same set of um, functions. <coughs> um, yes, the, the object normalizer, uh, the difference with get set method normalizer is that object normalizer calls the other methods. Um, the get set method normalizer doesn't support other methods. It just supports get set and either methods. So if, for example, your object exposes get a method, like get ID, get title, uh, and in this case is released, I want to see, uh, I want to know if this movie has been released, uh, or I want to know if this uh, movie has a category, as a genre. So in this case, just by convention, creating hazard and get a method, or is a method, will produce, in this case, as you can see, we have a genre new uh, property, which says false, and we have a released uh, attribute which corresponds to that is released uh, public method. And same in XML, so we are going to serialize uh, the boolean values, so 0 and 1, so it's by default how the uh, normalizer um, converts the boolean values. So in this case we are serializing the whole PHP object, okay, but most of the time, you don't want to serialize everything. You just want to expose some parts of your object. So you can configure the serializer or the normalizer to just expose some part of your PHP object. Uh, on, any, uh, on any normalizers, you can use this set ignore attributes method, which is just an array of the attributes you want to, uh, to skip from the normalization and from the serialization. In this case, the storage key attribute, I don't want to, to expose it because I, I consider that it's an internal property, an internal value. Um, so I can ignore this attribute, and as you can see, when I serialize my string to my object to, string, um, to a JSON string or an XML string, this storage key is not um, in the output anymore. So this feature has been introduced, I think, in 2.6, if I remember, so it's very, a very recent one. Um, Another thing you might want to achieve with this serializer is to change uh, the naming of the properties. Uh, we saw that the release date property was written in, in camel case, but maybe you want to expose your properties to uh, snake case or underscore case. So you can pass to any normalizer. You can inject a second argument, which is um, a name converter 
uh, and Symfony by default support a camel case to snake name uh, converter. So you just pass an instance of this object. The normalizer will normalize any camel case attributes to um, a snake case uh, attribute. Um, I will talk about the first argument uh, later on in this uh, talk. <coughs> Has this uh, object implements an interface? You can also create your own custom implementation of this name converter. Um, let's say you don't want to use snake case or camel case, you want to have something more custom. Um, for example, you want to have uh, some um, some prefixes to for your uh, attributes. So you can create your own custom class, your own custom implementation of this name converter interface, which is taken from the serializer components. And so this object will implement the two method, normalize and denormalize me public method from the interface. Um, so for example, I want to set up a particular prefix for all my attributes. And when I will normalize my attributes uh, to a PHP array, I want my attributes to be uh, named the prefix underscore my attribute name. And I will, when I will deserialize or when I will denormalize my uh, um, XML string or JSON strings to PHP array, um, I will remove the prefix to uh, recreate the original attributes. So this feature has been introduced in 2.7, so it's um, it's not yet stable. Well, the, the 2.7 version will be released in uh, in two weeks, maybe at the end of May, beginning of June. But it's already in the in the core, so you can already um, get this uh, this code. So as you can see, when I serialize my objects, I get all my attributes uh, with a prefix with a movie underscore prefix. If this is the, the prefix I've configured here in my construct method. Um, you can also change the uh, XML root name because here, as you can see, by default, you will have response as the uh, XML root name, but you may want to have something more custom. So you can pass a context to your uh, serialized function. The third, the third uh, argument here is a, is a context. Um, so we have this context XML root node name, where you can change uh, the root the, the root XML node uh, when you dump your object to XML. So in this case, I want to have movie instead of response for my XML output. If you want to so deserialize your, um, your string into, a, um, into an object, you can also perform um, your deserialization into an existing object. So instead of recreating an ex uh, a new object, you can ask the serializer to repopulate an existing object. Um, for example, you you fetch some object from a database, and then you also have some serialized content uh, that you want to deserialize, and you want to update your uh, PHP object, um, your existing PHP object with the serializer. So this is how you can do that. We have some serialized content of the movie object. So as you can see, I just want to have uh, two properties serialized in my XML or JSON string. Um, I have an existing object, so this one, which is pre-populated with some values. And I want to complete the population of this object with my serializer. So you can pass an object to populate attributes in your third uh, context array. Just give it the instance you want to repopulate. And in this case, the serializer will populate this object instead of instantiating a new movie instance. Yep. So if you, if you compare movie one and movie two in PHP, you will see that the two variables um, are pointing to the same reference in, uh, in memory. They are the, the two same objects. Um, so in the end, so my movie object, uh, the, uh, when, I, when I fetch it, for example, from the database, it had those two, uh, those three properties set. And the object was completed with those two values taken from the uh, serialized JSON or XML content. So that's basically what you can do with this serializer component. But um, I just show you how to uh, serialize a very basic PHP object, a single instance, a single object graph. What we want to achieve is to serialize more complex object graph when you have nested objects, an object that contains other objects. So let's say now my movie object um, can support some category object or, or genre object. 
um, a list of directors, an array of, direc of directors, and an array of roles. As you can see, this array of roles in the documentation, it says that um, it's a list of role objects, and each role object um, keeps a reference to the current movie and also to the, the actor object that plays a character in this movie. So we have first a one-to-one -one, uh, unidirectional relationship, so between my movie and the category. So we have a genre object with some IDs, some title, and some slug. And I want to set my genre object in the movie. So when I will serialize um, this object graph, as you can see, the um, output contains my main movie object. And we have an embedded genre object with the serialized ID, title, and, and slug. Same for JSON. If you want to serialize to JSON, you will get your embedded genre object. If you want to serialize your list of directors, so in this case, we have a one-to-many relationship, uh, but it's still unidirectional. So we just have the movie that has dire directors, but the directors are not yet uh, linked to movies. So we have a bunch of directors. I have two directors for this movie. So this one and this one, they have names and birth dates. I can um, push my uh, two uh, directors to the movie objects. And then I will serialize my uh, object graph we will get um, a list of directors. So we have the first director and the second uh, directors. As you can see, we have the, the name of the, of the property uh, for each director. So we have director's tag instead of director. Uh, but this is how the, um, the serializer by default serializes this um, director's array as XML and as JSON. So we have a director's key, which is an array, and inside this array we have two uh, JSON objects for the two uh, directors. So it works with one to many, many to many, uh, one to many, one to one, and also with many to many relationship. But this one is a bit tricky because we have a bidirectional relationship. Um, remember, we have this list of roles. So in my in my movie, I have actors and each actor plays one or more different characters in the movie. So the role object keeps reference of the movie and the actor uh, in this movie and the character played by this actor in the movie. Um, so if I create some, some roles, so we have two actors, we have Brad Pitt and Morgan Freeman, both uh, play one uh, one different role. We have the role stored in the movie object, and when you serialize your movie object, then you got a PHP file error in this case. Um, the serializer detects a circular reference. So, as you have the movie that contains roles and roles contains movies, so you are pointing to movies and then movies contains roles and so on. Um, so the serializer doesn't allow you to uh, serialize this one, uh, this many-to-many -many relationship. Okay, so that's uh, the tricky part of handling serializing. But you can fix that. Um, you can easily handle circular references. If if you don't want to get the, um, the nested movie object in your JSON or XML output, you can um, you can configure a circular reference handler. So this has been introduced in Symfony 2.6. Uh, the handler is basically just a PHP callback. So any PHP valid callback can be used. And so basically, we'll just return a different representation of this nested object. So instead of returning the whole object to be, um, to be serialized, I will just return, for example, the primary key of this object so that I can retrieve it later on for denormalizing. So if now I try to serialize my movie object that contains roles, so as you can see for uh, each role, so we have the embedded actor, we have the name of the character, and we just have the primary key for this movie object. I don't need to get the whole object graph as it's already as the root of my serialized XML string or JSON string. So you just set up a callback uh, to handle the, uh, this um, circular reference. And if, for example, you set up a custom 
denormalizer, you will be able to refresh to refetch your movie object with this ID. Okay. Um, you can also use a callback, uh, a custom callback normalizer. Um, so for this one, where am I? Uh, daytime object. Yes, as you can see, we have now daytime object. You want to store daytime objects instead of strings for dates. Um, and so if you have daytime object, for example, if you, s if you normalize, if you serialize your movie objects, uh, so for each actors, directors, or for the release date, by default, the serializer will simply serialize your daytime object. So you will get um, something like this for a daytime object. So you have all the properties of a daytime object that are serialized to JSON or, or XML. But you don't, you don't want to have these whole daytime object serialized. You just want to have the date in a particular format. <coughs> so to handle those special cases, you can also configure um, a custom callback. So with the set callbacks method of my normalizer, so my get set method normalizer or object normalizer object, I will configure a callback and I'm saying that for any release date, birthday or dev day attributes that I want to serialize, I want to normalize it with this callback function. And so this callback function will receive a daytime object. And if we receive a daytime object, we want to serialize it to just a string, a day string whatever format you want to use. And if it's not a daytime object, then we don't want to serialize it, so we just return null or an empty, uh, an empty string. So now my, my daytime object will be serialized to the format I've configured in my callback function. Um, so you can do that with any object um, that you want to serialize. For example, you have, I don't know, a price object um, that contains some some amount and some currency value, uh, then you want to serialize to the value uh, space and the currency code. So same in JSON, we have this release date, birth date, uh, um, converted in, uh, in string. Um, you can also use the custom normalizer. This one has been recently introduced, I think in 2.6 or 2.7. Uh, it allows you to um, check if your user object, if your object that you want to serialize, implement a particular interface. So you can embed the process of normalizing the data directly into your object to be serialized. So if you register this normalizer in your list of normalizer, this normalizer will just check that your object to normalize or denormalize implements this interface, normalizable interface. And if you implement this interface, it's up to you to return a normalized uh, representation of your uh, PHP objects. Uh, beware with this uh, implementation. You have to also take care of the um, recursive operation. You must do the recursive normalization yourself. Okay, so in this case, I'm just realizing the, the properties. But if you have nested objects, you have to manually recursively normalize them. One of the new features uh, coming in 2.7 is these uh, serialization groups. As I said, you don't want to serialize everything in your, um, in your object. You want to serialize the object um, based on a, cont uh, a context. So for example, you want to, uh, um, to uh, output more values, more attributes for admin users, but for regular users, you just want to output a subset of your object. Um, so thanks annotations, you can, for example, configure uh, groups on your uh, properties or on your methods. So for example, for the ID property, I just want to expose this ID property for admin users. Or I want to expose the uh, uh, slug property for admin users or publisher users. So a group is just a string, it's just a name, it's up to you to choose the, the names you want. Um, and for example, the, the released, um, uh, the is release function that, that produces the release attribute will be available for everyone. So you can configure these groups in annotations if you are familiar with annotations. Uh, in Drupal, uh, as you mostly use YAML, you can also configure your serialization groups with YAML. So we have this, uh, this file, 
where you can specify at the root the name of the class uh, which is serialized and the attributes in this class that you want to serialize. So for the IG attributes, I want to serialize with the admin groups. For the title, I want to serialize with admin or publisher or user groups and so on. Um, you can also do that in XML. So you can have an XML file that configures your serialization groups. Um, it's much more verbose, but it's also supported by the, compo the components. <coughs> if you want to set up this um, metadata um, in the components, you will need to load a YAML file or an XML file or some annotation. So you have some, um, some objects provided by the components to perform this task. And remember, uh, the normalizer can accept two arguments. I already show you the um, second argument, the name converter. But now you can pass um, a metadata factory object. So this object contains the metadata of your serialization groups. So it knows um, how you want to serialize your object. And so when you serialize your object, you can pass a second, uh, in this case, a groups option to your context. So my context in this case is that I want to serialize my movie object only for the user groups. So only the properties uh, that has the user's um, annotation or the user's groups will be exposed uh, in JSON or XML. We won't expose the other um, um, the other properties, and it works if you deserialize. If you have some constraints on groups, uh, your object will be re recreated and populated according to your uh, configured groups uh, as well. Oops. So how this works into Drupal? Um, so I'm not a Drupal guy, so. I try to uh, understand how Drupal integrates these um, these components. So basically, there is a serialization module in the core directory uh, that integrates the Symfony serializer. So if we look at these components or this module, it looks it has this um, this shape. Um, the most important file is probably the service file that declares the, the serializer services, and we can see that. This component provides some custom encoders and normalizers for Drupal entities or Drupal data structures. So they have a, an encoder and a, a normalizer directories. Um, so if we look at the um, normalizer directory, this is what it contains. Um, so these are implementation of normalizers for normalizing Drupal specific data structures. So I don't know about Drupal, but um, uh, I know that there are some config entity or some content object. So this is how they are normalized to uh, for the REST API in Drupal. Um, so when I look at the, the Drupal integration, uh, I saw that they don't use the Symfony built-in normalizers. They only use their normalizers. So they are they are free to do that as as they implement the corresponding interface. Um, and those services or, or those normalizers, encoders, and serializer are configured as services in the dependency injection container. So the module embeds this um, serialization.services.yaml file. And this is where we configure all the services. So remember, we have a serializer object, a serializer service. By default, it takes empty normalizers and an empty array of encoders. So how this serializer object is populated with normalizers and encoders, this is thanks to those tags. When you register a service in Drupal, and if you tag your service with normalizer or with encoder, then your service will be automatically injected as uh, the first argument of the serializer or as the second argument of the serializer object. So this is done by what we call compiler passes. Um, so a compiler pass is basically a piece of algorithm um, which post processes the compilation of the container, the dependency injection container. So that way, if you want to register a custom normalizer yourself, you can just create your new normalizer class. Then you just register this object as a service that you tag with uh, the normalizer tag. And then Drupal will take your service and inject it into the, the Symfony, uh, Symfony serializer. 
Um, <coughs> so this is all the services, all the registered services in Drupal. Um, the most important, of course, is Serializer. You should not use um, those ones manually. You should always use the Serializer uh, objects, the main objects. And there is a second, um, a second component uh, in Drupal, which is the HAL component or the HAL core module, which also uses the the uh, Symfony um, Serializer um, to expose the data as a JSON HAL representation. So again, for this module, um, so as you can see, this module extends it extends the, the serialization module, and it provides new normalizers. So normalizers to normalize data structures to JSON HAL representations. So again, there's an HAL.services.yaml file, which configures new normalizers, new encoders. Okay, so again, we have the normalizers here and they are tagged with normalizer tag or encoder tag so that Drupal can take those services and inject them into the serializer objects. Um, you can see that we have some priorities also um, here on this on this tag. Um, so this is to let Drupal organize the order of these normalizers in the Symfony serializer because the order in which you register the normalizers will matter uh, when the serializer will serialized content. Um, so this is how Drupal um, integrates the Symfony uh, serializer component. If you want to create your custom normalizer, you just create a new module, you create those corresponding service files and you register your services uh, with the corresponding uh, normalizer or encoder tags. If you want to go further with serialization, um, just um, a new library which is called JMS Serializer. Um, so the Symfony core component, the Symfony Serializer component works well for many use cases, but if you if you really want to have very advanced uh, seri serializations uh, system, then you should go on JMS Serializer, which is a PHP open source library you can get with Composer. And this tool provides much more advanced feature for serializing data you can handle, for example, uh, versioning. If, for example, you, you want to use a, you want to expose a REST API and you want to support a versioning of your API, this component can support by default uh, versioning of your data. Uh, it integrates with doctrines, symphonies, and framework. Maybe there's a Drupal module I haven't checked. Um, it gracefully handles the um, circular references. And you can configure everything in YAML or XML or annotations for the, the metadata. For example, you can configure how to uh, convert a collection of objects uh, into JSON or XML. It's much more advanced than uh, the Symfony Serializer uh, component. So in the Symfony, in the Symfony, um, um, Symfony context, uh, developers mostly use this component uh, in replacement of the default Sym Symfony uh, component for advanced use cases, of course. Um, so my advice is that if you have very simple use cases uh, for serializing data, just use the Symfony component. It works well. Um, as we saw, deserializing data is very complex, uh, especially when you have to handle metadata, when you have to reconstruct very complex uh, object graph. So for simple use cases, use the Symfony serializer. For more advanced use cases, use this JMS serializer uh, library in replacement of the, the Symfony one um, to have a better um, serialization system. And I'm done. Thank you very much. Is there any questions? Or are there any questions? questions oh, okay this is actually more of a comment um, the the serialization module in 
in Drupal 8 is tied to an API called the Type Data API, and it's a way of describing simple and complex data types. So when you're talking about, um, it's kind of an alternative to the JM serializer, JMS serializer you were, uh, component you were talking about. So for instance, if I had a Drupal node, the serialization module helps to uh, deserialize and, and serialize uh, Drupal nodes mm -hmm. or any entity or uh, data type that is custom defined. So if you were to define a, in, in my example, uh, in modules that I'm creating right now, I have like an accounting service that I integrate with. So if creating a um, an invoice, for example, that from an API and the type data API in Drupal uh, allows you to define like a, a, that invoice data type and then you can directly integrate it with uh, the serializer component. Okay. So that was just a comment, not a question. Okay, thank you. Right. So, no other questions? Thank you very much.